This is a mineral called pyrite, and it kind of looks fake, but it's actually completely natural. Pyrite's also sometimes called fool's gold, and it's able to form in a few different ways, but I think that this cube form is the most interesting. What I find weird is that it's shiny and cold like a metal, but it's not a metal at all. It's also very brittle, and it can break quite easily. Hey guys, it's Exorad Magical. Uh, I'm a schizophrenic 23 years old. 24 soon! And uh, what you're seeing right here is literally, well, to put it in simple terms, spirits are coming out of my hand. Whether you want to see that in a metaphysical way, psychological way, whatever, I'm tired of making it, like, you know, watered down for people. Literally what's happening in these videos, whenever I'm drawing, is there is a force, there's an energy that comes out of my hand and all of these faces come out, and they are reflections of the faces that I see in walls, that I see come out of mirrors, that I see come out of floors, everything. They're everywhere. I see the universe as a personified organism, and everywhere that I go, I'm being watched by entities. And it's not a belief, it's a fundamental truth to my exact existence. I'm not the only one out there, but not a lot of people that have this want to talk about it, so I'm talking about it. You can try to, like, talk down to me if you want, but that's what's going on. Two pieces of the same metal touch in space, they become permanently stuck together! They sure do! This is a process called cold welding or contact welding. And it's described quite well by Richard Feynman in his famous Feynman lectures. He says, The reason for this unexpected behaviour is that when the atoms in contact are all of the same kind, there is no way for the atoms to know that they are in different pieces of copper. Space is pretty much a vacuum, so there are no other atoms around each piece of metal to distinguish between the two, like air or grease, so they instantly fuse together. Whoa. Blood <laughs> warning. to these creatures by reviving them. Scientists believe that the remains of saber-toothed tigers preserved in the permafrost can serve as sources of DNA. If scientists can manage to get the saber-toothed tiger genes, they will have to find a surrogate mother later on. According to the researchers, the best candidate is the African lioness, which is believed to be the optimal egg donor. The Irish elk, also known as the giant elk, is an extinct ungulate mammal from the Cervidae family. This species existed from the late Pleistocene to the beginning of the Holocene, 10 to 13,000 years ago, throughout Eurasia and North Africa. But especially many remains were found in the peatlands of Ireland, hence the name of the species. Scientists note that the Irish elk was one of the largest deers that ever existed on the planet. The height of the largest individuals was over two meters at the withers, while the distance between the tips of the So you guys know I've been growing some crystals and honestly they're just not turning out the way that I want them to. So I sat down and I thought about it and I was like, wait a second, you grew up on Bill Nye the Science Guy. You could science the crap out of this. And then I was like, wait, I don't really know if I can do this. And I was like, wait a second, you're a teacher. You're a theater teacher. Okay, so I'm a theater teacher, but at least I can act like a scientist until I actually am one. So I did a bunch of research on how to actually grow crystals and the uh, like compounds that I need to make that happen. And then when I had a list all put together, I went to the store, I grabbed the things that I could from the store, and then the rest I ordered on Amazon. And then I proceeded to set up the bathtub area in our second bathroom as my crystal growing laboratory. The only thing that this place didn't have was the light that the crystals needed to grow. So I actually ended up getting a UV light and organizing all my stuff. So let's see how this goes. Apparently you've been wearing your mask wrong. 
If you're not sick, you need to wear your mask with the blue side towards your face. And if you're sick, you need to wear it with the white side towards your face. Let me explain why this is nonsense. Cut my blue surgical mask in half and as you can see, it's got three different layers. The outer blue layer is waterproof, the middle layer blocks particles and the inner layer absorbs moisture. If I wear the mask like this, the inner absorbent layer will catch any respiratory droplets if I cough or sneeze and keep the mask dry. Now if I wear the mask inside out like this, this inner blue layer is not going to absorb any of my respiratory droplets, the mask becomes wet and loses its pathogen blocking abilities. There's a possibility for reproductive harm to occur because of the way the proteins work. I love that he's answering his own question with, by doing research, but let's make sure he gets the biology right first. So the claim is that when you get the vaccine, you're gonna make antibodies against spike protein. Those antibodies are going to recognize mistakenly a human protein called syncytin-1. Now syncytin-1 is important in embryo implantation into the uterus. So if you make antibodies against that, it, those antibodies will bind, they will prevent implantation in female infertility. There's a couple of problems with that. First of all, in order for you to have antibodies that mistake another protein, they gotta look a lot alike. And syncytin and spike protein don't look alike at all, and they don't cross-react. However, if they did cross-react, then we most definitely are making antibodies against the spike protein in the natural infection, which means that we should see female infertility in natural infection, and we don't. So this has been completely debunked. This is not a thing. So today I designed the Sleeping Beauty inspired potion bottles. They start off pink, but when you swirl them up, they turn blue. And eventually when they settle, they go back to pink. So cute.